been looking at various fashion silhouettes and body shapes. Today we're actually going to be showing you how some of these shapes are created. We are here at Bowers Mansion located in Washoe Valley. This magnificent home was built in 1864 by Sandy and Eile Bowers. As you look around, you'll notice it is decorated in authentic 19th century furnishings. We are now upstairs in the bedroom of Eile Bowers. Acting as Mrs. Bowers is Paulette Groon, who will be showing us the art and skill of getting dressed in the 1860s. Paulette, as she awakens, has on her wrapper. This garment acted as a bathrobe. She will now be disrobing and taking that off, and you'll be able to see her chemise. A chemise was a woman's most intimate garment. It held closely to the figure, and if we look at it, it is composed of and constructed with raglan-type sleeves. It has many different tucks which create the shaping for this garment. Paulette turns around and you can see that it has a scoop neck with a ribbon. That can be used and be adjustable so that when she might get dressed in a ball gown, the uh, shoulders can actually be removed off the, uh, off the shoulders. Paulette will now be putting on her drawers, her underpants, briefs, panties, if you will. Women have not worn underpants or panties or briefs only really since about the 1820s. Uh, men have typically worn them for several centuries longer. And if you think about that, let's think about the silhouette again of men and women's garments. Men's garments fitted the body. They were trousers, pant legs. And so wearing under briefs would be natural to protect those, pant those pantaloons from the dirt of the body. However, for women, it was a different silhouette. And indeed, they wore wide skirts. So there was nothing really close to the figure. Women briefs originally were open drawers. They had an open crotch. They tied around the waist and you put your right leg in and your left leg in, but they were open in the center. Closed drawers did not start becoming acceptable until several decades later, about the 1880s. Now why is it that women didn't wear underwear for so long? And a lot of this is attributed to the Bible and to religion. Men's garments were typically pantaloons or trousers, and a woman would have never worn a man's garment. And in fact, it was frowned upon by the Bible and by many religious groups. Paulette now has her drawers on, and as you can see, they are a couple inches beneath her knees. This is a specific type of drawer and was called pantaloons or pantalettes. Sometimes drawers could be shorter as well. Paulette is now getting ready to put on her shoes and socks. You might be wondering why she put on her shoes and socks before she has her dress on. But once a 19th century woman is fully attired in her crinoline and corset, she cannot bend over. So she's putting on her shoes and socks right now. Now aren't those absolutely wild socks? Yes, indeed. In the 19th century, socks could be multicolored, they could be solid, and they were bright colors. The knitting machine was actually invented in 1589, so the knitting machine is quite a bit older than the sewing machine, and women and men have been wearing stockings for many centuries. Watch how she garters them. She is wearing an elastic rubber garter. There were also, quote unquote, suspenders, which would hang from the waist, which could also be used as garters. Her shoes. These are buckle shoes. She is able to slip them on over her stockings, sometimes using a shoehorn. The buttons are on the outside of the shoes. This style of shoes for women is relatively new. Women's shoes before the 1860s were actually slipper-like. They were very loose-fitting and could be worn on either foot, the right or the left foot. Then, once they became loose, they could be switched and worn on the other shoe or the other foot. Those types of shoes were actually called straights. But this particular type that you're seeing today is indeed a right and a left shoe. Paulette will now be coming out of her bedroom and coming into the adjoining room, her dressing room. At this point she will be putting on her corset. The corset. This device has been worn by men and women for many centuries and as I will be discussing later in the program is still worn by many women today. 
As we watch Paulette put this on, you can see that she is doing it herself. If you believe the movies, you'll think that every woman had a maid, and that's not particularly the case. Many women of modest means could, and did indeed, secure their corsets themselves. This is a rather difficult task, however. As you can see, she has to have her arms behind her, and she pulls snugly on each side. She's pulling them very tight, as this is critical to the fit of her dress, as she has to get her corset and her waist small enough so that her outer garment, her beautiful gown, will fit. The corset is made of stays, and the stays are metal stays, and these used to be made out of whalebone, but now, or in the 19th century, they were made out of steel. It is shaped for the bust, and then it is rather rigid all the way down, flaring out over the hips. There are back laces that you can see where she has tied it up. When Paulette turns around, you can see the center front, and you can see that the two points at the center front are referred to as a busk. Those hold the stomach in and secure the corset in place. And you also notice that the front is secured with a form of hook and eye. The corset reduced a woman's waist by many inches. In this particular case, Paulette has reduced her girth by three to four inches. The corset was proper, it was desirable, it was appropriate in the 19th century, and any and every fashionably dressed woman wore one. But the corset also had many debilitating effects. Women's muscles atrophied. They were not holding their own stomach muscles in themselves. Women became dependent upon the corset, many of them not being able to stand or walk without the support of a corset. A corset also altered a woman's internal organs. It literally compressed her rib cage. A healthy rib cage today is expanded. In the 19th century, it was constricted. By reducing the rib cage itself, it also displaced the diaphragm and the internal organs. They were shifted up or down to get the small waistline. By having Paulette stand side profile like this, we can look at what the corset has actually achieved. Her waist is reduced, and you can see the narrowness of the rib cage. The corset ends right at the bust point, allowing the bust to be upwardly lifted. Paulette will now undo her chemise a little bit, and you can see that that will allow her shoulders to be more exposed and to create a more daring neckline or decoutage for evening attire. 